Hello, hello. Um, today I thought I'd play a little with pebbles. Um, sort of in a continuation of a video I did quite a while ago for YouTube concerning the Tetractus, which is the ancient Greek, uh, or more precisely Pythagorean, model of uh, both geometry and cosmology and many more things, music and things like that. And I did a video on that because I think there's a lot more to that story which can be l looked at and understood once we move from the paradigms of the ancient Greek geometry as it's been uh, handed down to us in the books of Euclid and others, Plato, um, and instead look at those uh, stones that the Greek were using, hence calculus, which comes from their word for pebble. Um, yeah, so looking at that from a perspective of synergetics and spherical thinking, a lot more can be seen to be you know, within that model. So you might notice this is now not 10, but they would say 13, or I would say a dozen and one pebbles. And that is for the reason that I want to play a little game and in this video compare uh, decimal and dozenal, or as they Okay, call it base 10 and base 12. So pretty much everyone nowadays is, uh, at least in the dominant cultures on the globe, is well versed and practiced in thinking in numbers of 10. And that is called decimal or base 10 mathematics. And they say it comes from the fact that we have 10 fingers, so it seems reasonable to go 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, and that's a whole set. But I think the, the roots of, of that are most likely actually not the fingers, perhaps, but rather, well, maybe it's both of them, but I think it's got much to do with this, the tetrad or tetractus, which is Greek, f tetrad is ten for in Greek, ancient Greek. So now we see we have a triangle here, which is first one, and then two, and then three, and then four. And this fact was absolutely stunning to the Greek and they explained a lot about how um, one would be the monad and later that would be identified as, identified as the point. Two would be the dyad uh, being, you know, more than one. There's a lot. There's a, a whole book on, on the, um, what's it called? Philosophy of uh, arithmetics or something like that from that time period roughly where they go through the whole d t mm, tetra uh, no, uh, decade and say well every number there's a there's a lot to be said about them but generally speaking people nowadays read in their books that you draw one pebble and that's a point you draw two pebbles that makes a line you draw three pebbles and that is a plane mark the fact that it's a triangular plane which is a lot more reasonable than the quadrilateral and then they take four and they put them together like so and they say well it's a tetrahedron as they called it uh, which is the first of the so-called platonic solids and that would be the beginning of what they call space, three-dimensional space, so it's got a volume. However, I doubt that the Pythagoreans thought in terms of 
three dimensions the way that we now do because from this one gets really quickly into synergetics where everything is four dimensional and here is another bonus if you put them all 10 together like this you notice it's a triangle right not a right triangle but a left angle and here is something we can do with it that we couldn't be doing if we were using um, if we were just drawing this right so let me show you if I put these above one another like this roughly speaking we get a another kind of four eyes which is the next the next higher frequency of four eyes and while the small one would look like this here four spheres this larger one with the ten spheres would look like this and this is um, something we don't usually hear about the tetractus that it can do this I'm pretty sure the the Pythagoreans were very much aware of this as they were playing with pebbles and they can be stacked rather nicely whereas drawing them on paper wouldn't allow for that um, so this also shows that they probably knew that within this we find the eight eyes okay and that is I think quite noteworthy about the number 10 that it uh, allows for two things or it, it kind of bridges in a way the, the so-called triangular numbers and the so-called tetrahedral numbers or you know the numbers of spheres in a triangle with the numbers of spheres in a four eyes and that is a significant thing in its own um, there's more to say there but I won't go into it because what I want to do now is um, show practically why base 10 might not be as useful as it seems right so let's try something let's say we have this 10 and we want to um, divide them as they say so imagine I've, I'm not alone here. I've got some friends, and I want to spread these evenly. So if I'm if I'm alone, I got ten. If I'm together with another, I say one, one, two, two, three, three, uh, four, four, five, five, and that's easily done. So we can half ten into five and five no problem at all however once we are three friends there's a bit of a problem let's let's see we got one two three four five six seven eight nine around one so there's ten we can't split these evenly and I mean with some things it's possible to break them into f fractions I guess you could break these stones but it would be very hard to break them evenly um, so there's a problem we cannot divide it evenly into three let's see about four we got one two three and four and five and six and seven and eight and nine and ten and that's it okay doesn't work no even spread we would need to do this and then divide this up these up into halves which we couldn't so again that doesn't work we can't divide 10 evenly into thirds and into quarters nope no way let's see about five friends okay so we got one two three four five six seven eight nine ten oh look no problem oh i did that off camera uh, did i no that's one two three four five okay still in camera all right but you see that's no problem uh ten divided by five is two so there's another even spread 
And now let's say we are six friends. We got one, two, three, four, five, and six, and seven, eight, nine, and ten. Oh, again, no way. We can't divide in six. We don't have enough to do that evenly. That's six. Uh, how about seven? Seven friends. We got one, two, three, four, five, six, and seven. And how do we divide the rest of three? I don't know. No way. Again, we couldn't do that. Which leaves us with eight. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Uh, uh, well, that doesn't work either. Not enough to spread these. That's eight and nine. One, two, three, four, five, six, <laughs> seven, eight, nine, and one is over. No, that doesn't work. We can divide in ten. All right. So we can do ten divided by <sighs> by two is five by three nope by four nope by five is two by six nope seven nope eight nope nine nope ten yeah one all right so that's not so many we can do also we can only count with our two hands until one two three four five six seven eight nine ten and then we would go and erase that ten to add more and say ten twenty and so forth all right, let's change it up a bit. Now we're at 12 minutes, which is a good place to add some more to these, because I spoke to you about dozenal. Now dozenal numbers are base 12, so the unit we're thinking in is not 10, but 12. Here's a dozen uh, pebbles, all right? Let's try the same game. Let's say I'm two friends. <laughs> One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, and a dozen. No problem. So, oh, that was off screen. I'm sorry. So we got two pairs of six, which is a dozen divided by two. Let's divide it by three. Let's say we're three friends. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, and twelve. Oh, look at that. We can have a third, three thirds of a dozen. So a third of a dozen is four. Let's see about quarters. Let's have four friends. One, Two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, and twelve. Look at that. We get a dozen in quarters. That's three. Cool. So we can already do half, we can do thirds, we can do quarters. Let's see about dividing by five. That's not so easy. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, and we got two left over. So it seems we can't divide a dozen by five. However, if we need to, we can help ourselves by going for five dozen which is 60, which is what the Bab Babylonians were using as their base. So if I have five dozen as in a 60 minutes of an hour, for instance, it's no problem at all to divide that by five. So it's a kind of a bridge. And yeah, that is very important to keep in mind. We 60 is a bit, seems random in terms of tens. It's just six times 10. But as six is a very important number in dozenal, um, 
it kind of speaks to its relevance and five dozen is truly a very very relevant number and the greek uh, no the 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 babylonians counted ap uh, apparently like this so you see my numbers here you know i'm gonna do that w once we've done the, the breaking apart let's let's continue with that first all right so we had five that didn't work no way and then we get six so we have one two three four five six seven eight nine ten eleven and twelve so a dozen divided by six is two no problem let's divide it by seven one two three four five six seven and we got five left we can't spread those evenly so seven is no go but seven is in terms of dozen or you can understand seven as six around one right so like this is six around one which is seven all right seven now eight uh one two three four five six seven eight and we have four left we can't spread those so eight doesn't work however eight is actually two-thirds of a dozen right so that isn't too unreasonable to think with that that was eight now ten, nine. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Uh, and we got three more so no we can't divide it by three uh, by by nine but a dozen no uh, nine is three quarters of a dozen so that is also a relevant number and a very resonant number that's nine how about ten? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, and ten leaves us with two so another case of no go the same is true for 11 and with 12 we get one each all right so we see even though we cannot divide a dozen evenly by um, five we get that with five dozen no problem we can't divide it by seven we can't divide it by eight or nine however those are basically uh, two-thirds and two uh, three quarters respectively so there is they aren't as strange as they seem perhaps all right so that was what we get with a dozen so even just from that we see that it is very good indeed for this kind of number of reasons to actually use a dozen in terms of our unit of numbers whole unit rather than 10 because we simply get more members more whole ra rational members members of that which is in the real world significant if you want to spread up things like you want to buy eggs it's better to have a dozen eggs than to have 10 for reasons of dividing them up um, which is why we have still in our languages most of the languages that i heard of do have a specific number for 12 which is a dozen and also a dozen dozen which is a grow um, which is 144 in decimal numbers which gets us to uh, the thing with the fingers you remember as i said we can count 10 fingers no problem however you see these symbols on my fingers here 
that's numbers and indeed it is my co-creation with a friend of a dozen numbers so this is a dozen system for numbers and the reason for that being on my fingers is we can very much count in dozens with our fingers let's see I go uh, how do I do this for the camera I tried this way one two three four five six seven eight nine ten eleven and twelve try it on your own hand if you got all your fingers there present then you do have a dozen digits there so that's a dozen on one hand which which is to say if I have that full I can go one dozen on the other hand in other words I can go on one two three four five six seven eight nine ten eleven twelve and I got two dozen twenty four three dozen thirty six uh, four dozen forty eight five dozen 60, 7 dozen, uh, wait, five, 6 dozen is uh, 72, 8 dozen is, am I at 8? Here is 8. Sorry, you got confused with the decimal numbers. 8 dozen is, um, no, 7 dozen is 84, 8 dozen is uh, 96, 9 dozen is 108, 10 dozen is 120, 11 dozen, uh, I guess, 132, and um, a grow, one dozen dozen, that's 144. So with my two hands, I can effectively count not only to a grow, which is a dozen dozen, but even a grow and one dozen. <laughs> So even further than 144, with two hands, mind you, without losing the count, right? So it's not like 10, 20, 30, 40, that kind of thing, where we always lose the count. But we can continue counting to a very high number, which we then also can divide up in very easy, um, whole, rational bits. Okay, but you you might recall that in the beginning I had a dozen around one beats or um, pebbles lying here, which is, you know, the, the number 13 as the number 7 has a very specific place in the symbologies of, of people. Um, and particular number 13 has a very bad reputation for being somewhat of an evil number or unlucky or whatever. However, I think that's a taboo put in place for people not, so that people do not recognize the, significant of the, the significance of the number. Again, in tens, it's not so easy to see because it's just 13, three more than 10. But in dozen all, it's very important because it is, as you see here, a dozen. So this is six and another six around one, a dozen around one. This is spread out in a plane, but if you were to put them equally around that sphere in the middle here, then you get this, which is a dozen around one. And this is the so-called vector equilibrium in synergetics. It's the geometry associated with the number zero. And also, like the the nucleus nucleated um, frame of reference to begin with and to think in and that is easy to recognize as being related to this in more ways than one um, not least that even if I spread them out like this the lines between them mark out uh, the projection of that vector equilibrium or as I would call it I used to call it the mother of all spheres I do not necessarily do that anymore I instead have begun, be, be, begun calling it the two dozen eight eyes or tau dozen eight eyes but that's a story in itself so this is the same dozen around one that I just had 
And let me show you how, if I connect all these dots, we get the projection, like a shadow of that vector equilibrium. This is a dozen around that one, and if that one is also connected through, then we get that. that. And that is the very structure of the dozen around one uh, spheres. And to leave you with that, here is that exact same um, set of a, uh, three dozen vectors that make up this structure as that structure. And you can see that it is actually able to move because space-time is not static, it's not platonic, it's very much alive and animate. And so are we. And I think that all my growing understanding of the geometries of space-time, of the framework of spherical thinking, and all the many, 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 many cases in which there is a resonance between the dozenal thinking and these structures, it's all pointing towards the fact that we would be better off, I think, if we thought more in those terms. And I know it's a bit difficult for a grown-up to change their habits. I have been there. <laughs> I grew up with squares and uh, square numbers and uh, tens and all these things. But, uh, you know, the last few years I chose to focus on this instead. And it is beautiful and it is fun and it is great to play around with. And to leave you now, I'll just draw out those numbers that I had for the dozen of numbers. So if we were to turn this into a clock face, and this is the number 12. Oh, for you that's 6, I'm sorry. Well, anyways, now I put the point there. If that is, you know, like midnight, zero hours, then we do have... This is 6 around another six is here, so we have zero, this is one, this is two, this is three, this is four, five, six, seven, which is six around one. Ooh, that's a bit funky, eight. 9, 10, 11, and, you know, in 10 system, in decimal, for the number 10, which is 1 times 10 plus 0, we say 1 and 0 for 10. Now we have 1 and 0 for a dozen. All right, so we got 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, and a dozen. And with these numbers, it's easier not to get confused, <laughs> I think. And a lot of the patterns that are very beautiful show up more clearly. All right, I hope you enjoyed that. And it might have been um, informative. I hope so. And maybe you, you know, begin looking into it and playing with it. And if you do, please let me know, uh, leave a comment, uh, tell me what you think, tell me if you perhaps have already had some experience with it, and otherwise uh, be well and talk to you soon. Alright, take care.